Let's talk about ARDS. First, we will review diagnostic criteria. Then, we will review four landmark trials that guide our management for patients with ARDS who require mechanical ventilation, with the ultimate goal of being able to describe the clinical outcomes and physiology that guide our practice. This arrow represents both the patient's ARDS course and the timeline for four landmark trials. First, let's talk about diagnosis. We diagnose ARDS via the Berlin criteria. The Berlin criteria were created by an international panel of experts and published in 2012. First, a patient must have bilateral alveolar infiltrates, shown as a chest x-ray with the characteristic pattern. Second, respiratory failure and alveolar infiltrates cannot be entirely explained by cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Third, the patient's PaO2 divided by FiO2 as a decimal, otherwise known as the P to F ratio, must be less than 300 on at least 5 of PEEP. Finally, all of the above must be occurring within one week of a known clinical insult. In this case, that insult is COVID-19. Patients with ARDS are intubated to control both oxygenation and ventilation. How do we manage a patient with ARDS after they are intubated? To answer that question, we are going to briefly review four landmark trials from the years 2000, 2006, 2013, and 2019. Immediately following intubation, we need to set the tidal volume on the ventilator. The ARMA trial provides evidence for low tidal volume ventilation, otherwise known as lung protective ventilation. The ARMA trial compared a tidal volume of 6 cc per kilogram and a plateau pressure of less than 30 to a tidal volume of 12 cc per kilogram and a plateau pressure of less than 50. 861 patients were included in the trial. ARMA demonstrated lower mortality in the 6 cc per kilogram group, 31%, versus 39%. Lower mortality in the 6 cc per kilogram group is primarily attributed to protecting the lungs from excessive stretch, known as volume trauma. In addition, patients who received low tidal volume ventilation also required slightly higher PEEP, suggesting that prevention of atelectasis and avoidance of atelectotrauma is also beneficial. To recap, ARMA provides evidence for low tidal volume ventilation in ARDS. Low tidal volume ventilation is associated with decreased mortality. After we set the ventilator, we need to be aware of our patient's overall volume status. The FACT trial assessed a fluid conservative versus fluid liberal strategy for patients with ARDS. 1,000 patients were included in the trial. FACT demonstrated no mortality difference, but increased oxygenation, increased number of ventilator-free days, and decreased ICU length of stay in the fluid conservative group. Overall, FACT provides evidence that a dry lung is a happy lung and we should strive for a net even to slightly negative fluid balance in patients with ARDS that are not in shock. To recap, the FACT trial assessed a fluid conservative versus fluid liberal strategy. The fluid conservative strategy was associated with improved oxygenation, less time on the ventilator, and less time in the ICU. What if the patient remains hypoxic after intubation and low tidal volume ventilation? The PROCEVA trial provides evidence for early prone positioning. If a patient had a P to F less than 150 on at least 60% FiO2 and a PEEP of greater than or equal to 5, Proceva compared prone positioning for 16 hours to supine. 466 patients were included in the trial. Proceva demonstrated a lower mortality in the prone group, 16% versus 33%. How does prone positioning work to decrease mortality? Shown as a CT slice from a patient with ARDS. Note the characteristic bilateral and dependent areas of involvement in the supine position. These areas of consolidation are partially composed of atelectatic lung. Note how the superior anterior lung zones are relatively less affected. This area is also referred to as the baby lung. Therefore, in the supine position, the tidal volume is delivered predominantly to these less affected lung zones, resulting in overdistension, stress, and strain. Overall, the result is decreased VQ matching and increased lung stress, resulting in increased ventilator-induced lung injury. A few things happen when the patient is transitioned to the prone position. First, prone positioning decreases atelectasis and improves recruitment, or opens up the dorsal caudal lung zones. In addition, there is redistribution of dependent edema with gravity. Finally, the weight of the heart and chest wall are directed downward and away from the lung, relieving compression and increasing overall lung compliance. 
Overall, these changes lead to a more homogeneously distributed tidal volume across the entire ventral to dorsal lung axis. This homogeneous distribution of transpulmonary pressure improves VQ matching and decreases lung stress, resulting in less ventilator-induced lung injury. To recap, Proceva studied the effects of early prone positioning in severe ARDS. Prone positioning is associated with decreased mortality. What if the patient remains hypoxic after being proned? The ROSE trial evaluated the effects of early neuromuscular blockade by comparing early cisatricurium versus usual care for moderate or severe ARDS. 1,006 patients were included in the trial. The ROSE trial found no mortality difference between the two groups at 90 days. These results contradicted the Acurisis trial from 2010, which had previously shown a mortality benefit for early neuromuscular blockade and severe ARDS. So, if the patient is still hypoxic at this point, the ROSE trial argues for neuromuscular blockade for ventilator dyssynchrony and or refractory hypoxia, but not necessarily for all patients with moderate or severe ARDS. To recap, the ROSE trial assessed early neuromuscular blockade and found no mortality difference. Therefore, paralysis is now utilized to manage dyssynchrony and or refractory hypoxia. In this video, we discussed utilizing the Berlin criteria to diagnose ARDS and how four landmark trials over a 20-year period, ARMA, FACT, PROCEVA, and ROSE, guide our ARDS management following intubation. We also describe the clinical outcomes and relevant physiology of these trials, including low tidal volume ventilation and prone positioning. Thank you for watching.